Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So now we are going to start a session number four. And this is the last day of this week. We are going to end the week number one. Time really flies and we don't know how, but in this moment we are uh, beginning the last session for this week. So we are going to start with the topics that we are going to develop today. Um, we are going to start right now because we need to um, learn a lot of things about the topics um, that I have for you today. And also because we just have an hour, so we're going to start. So let me share the screen with you because we need to see the information that I have for you. So we are going to begin with the topic because we are going to talk about uh, some structures that we are going to use when we are uh, talking in English. So. Hello, good evening. Mm, it is not necessary that you complete lesson one and two. You can do all the lesson that you want. In this case, uh, you can do all the activities if you want. And it is not like you have to do it just one or two. You can do well, all the things that you want. Tell me, Imelda. Actually, um, uh, today I, I I received a message and told me about that and and we have to complete two two lessons. Yes, in this case, uh, it says that they it is necessary. Me, they told me about that. Uh -huh. It is necessary that you have a complete. Uh, one and two because uh, if you can see we have five and in the week number one we have to complete number one and number two because it is that um, the activities that we need for this first week for the second week you need complete number three for week number three you need to complete a uh, number four and like that but if you want to complete one, two, and three, it's okay. You can do it. But you, um, the bad thing is if you not complete number one and number two, just number one, because you will not have time to end all the activities at the end of the, uh, of the course. So for that reason is that you need to complete at least number one and number two. But if you want to complete all the activities, go on, it's okay. So for this reason is that you need to complete at least number one and number two this week. And we're talking about that. You have time for tomorrow because tomorrow we are not going to have the sessions. So you have time uh, tomorrow to complete the activities. So. Okay. Now, thank you. You're welcome. Now, uh, we have this topic that is count and non count nouns. We are going to talk about not like structures that we were talking about in the past days. We are going to talk about vocabulary in this case. Let me see. Oh, that's okay. So, we are going to talk about vocabulary because we need to separate. This, um, this vocabulary into parts. The nouns that we can count and the nouns that we cannot count. But in this case, we are going to talk about count and noun count nouns. And also we are going to see some nouns that we can use in both uh, structures. Also, we are going to talk about uh, some expressions of quantity when we are talking about um, things, objects, and all of the things. And also we are going to have some uh, phrases that we can use with count nouns and with non-count nouns. And also we are going to 
um, we are going to have expressions that we can use with both, uh, with these two type of nouns. So we have the objective for today and it says, learn how to describe problems in English using count and non-count nouns. By the end of this class, you will learn how to describe problems in a city using phrases like too many, too much, less, fewer, enough, and more. You will also learn about common non-count nouns, including water, oxygen, English, uh, traffic, milk, soccer, sunshine, etc. And understand how to tell if a noun is count or non-count. In this case, I will give you some example of these words, but at the end of the session, I will send to you some links that um, in which you will find a lot of words because we have a lot of uh, expression, we have a lot of um, vocabulary. So I will send those links to you. Uh, you can uh, look for the words that we are going to find in that, um, in that links because it will be very useful for us to uh, have all of this vocabulary. So we are going to have at least two or three links in which we can um, see all of these words. We are going to have one link for non-count nouns, one link for uh, countable nouns, and also we are going to have a link for a, a vocabulary uh, that we can use in both um, uh, words. So we are going to have a lot of things to uh, maybe a study uh, in this um, time. And you will have that information for the future. So we are going to separate all the information that we have about the count and non count nouns. Uh, we are going to define what are these vocabulary and we are going to have the examples. But we are going to start uh, saying what is a, um, a noun first, what is a noun? Also, we are going to talk about the two kinds of nouns that we have in this case is the count nouns and the non-count nouns. And then we are going to create a table in which we are going to see some words that um, can be like, they are part of this vocabulary. So we are going to start with the information. So. We have count and non-count nouns. And we are going to define. The first thing is that we are going to talk about is the noun. First, what is a noun? And it says that nouns are words that identify a person. Nouns are words that identify a person. A place or thing. And we have some examples. We have boys. The men, Seattle, Virginia, paper, etc. So in this case, we have like a general information about the nouns because there are a group of words that we can use to identify uh, people, places, uh, things, and we have the common nouns and the proper nouns in this case. But in, in that category, we have also this, um, these two uh, different kind of nouns that we are going to study today. So there are also two different kind of nouns. And we have count 
and non count. So what are the uh, count nouns? That is the first thing. Count nouns. And it says that it refers count nouns refer to people, places, and things. that can be counted. Of course, it is talking about something that we can count. In este caso, ¿verdad? estamos dividiendo el, los nombres en dos categorías. La primera, nombres contables. La segunda, nombres no contables. Y obviamente por el nombre ya sabemos que los count nouns se refieren ¿verdad? a los nombres de objetos, personas, eh, lugares que podemos contar, que son tangibles y que tienen una cantidad específica. So, for this, we have this example. 20 students. 20 students, eight rooms, one box, And four socks. So in this case, we are using the numbers to let the people understand that we are talking about a, a specific number of things. In the first one, we are talking about people. We are talking about students. Students are people that we can count. And in this case, we have 20 students. Then we have a space, a physical space. That is very important that we understand that in this case, it is not like uh, we are talking about the, the universe. We are talking about um, spaces or physical spaces in which we can uh, see uh, the walls like in the rooms. So in this case, we have eight rooms, eight spaces that we can count. Then we have one box. What is the material? We don't know, but we have a box. And then we have four socks. That piece of clothes that we use in our um, feed, right? So in that case, are things that we can count. Then we have number two. And it says the non-count nouns. And we have, on the other hand, Refer to item, qualities, or concepts that cannot be counted. It is important to know that non count nouns usually do not have plural forms. In this case, when we are using this kind of words, we don't have uh, the plurals for these words in this case, because we are not going to count these uh, things because there are not, uh, in some cases, something physical. So in this case, we are not going to add S or ES at the end of the words. And 
And we have some examples. We have loyalty, information, pollution, and salt. So in this case, we have a very specific information about these uh, nouns. And in the first one, we have that, so let me take this because I need the marker for this one. Okay. So in this case, we have that count nouns refer to people, places, and things that can be counted. In this case, we have this specific information in which we have the um, categories in which we are going to apply the, this information. And in the second one, we have more information. It is uh, kind of longer than the, the previous one. And we have that it refers to items, qualities, or concepts. It is not talking about something that we can see. In some cases, it is talking about something that we can feel. So that's why we have these noun and nouns. So, eh, solo para hacer como un, um, para remarcar la información. En la primera, pues obviamente tenemos eh, cosas que sí podemos eh, ver y tocar, o sea, cosas más tangibles. Y por eso, ¿verdad? La, las ponemos en la categoría de contables. En las no contables, pues obviamente nos referimos a cosas que en muchos de los casos solo podemos sentir como lo son, ¿verdad? Las cualidades o conceptos de algunos eh, temas o cosas por el estilo. En ese caso no lo podemos contar, pero también tenemos materiales que son eh, o que tienen una medida diferente, como es el agua, el oxígeno y todo eso. So, in that case, it is non-count nouns. So, let's see some words we are going to create a vocabulary about eh, non-count nouns and count nouns. We are going to have some uh, words to see the categories. We are going to divide the categories. And also, uh, we are going to see some examples of words that we can use in both. But first, let's uh, read something else about the countable nouns and non-countable nouns. That it says, like, um, the countable nouns are common nouns that can take a plural. That is one difference also can combine with numerals or counting quantifiers. In this case, in the examples for this, uh, the number one, we have numbers that can uh, function as these counting uh, quantifiers and can take an indefinite article such A or N. En el primero tenemos otros, um, uh, tenemos otra información extra sobre cosas que nos pueden ayudar a hacer más fácil esto de los nombres contables. Let me take some uh, things in here in which you can use to identify uh, these words. So it says that we can use, in this case, we can have plurals. Lo podemos hacer plurales. Also, we can combine with numerals. Combine with numerals or counting quantifiers. Also, we can use the article A and so, in, in, for example, we have. Um, for example, we have a book. We are talking about one book, but we are using the article and not the number. Also, we have another one that it, that it says in this example, the outside of an orange, the outside of an orange like this, the outside 
of n. And we have here the article. In this case, we have the article in that place. And orange, we are talking about something that we can count. Is Peter, but the inside is sweet. In that case, we have the, um, the uses of the articles. So in the uncountable nouns uh, that are substance, in this case, we have another information about these, um, these nouns. So we have here, they are substance concepts, like it says in the information, materials, information that we cannot divide into separate elements. In this case, are ideas. Uh, for example, we cannot count water. We can count uh, a glass of water. So in that case, we have this general idea of the word water but we cannot count. I cannot take a one, in this case, I have one water, two water, three water. I can do a, that thing because in that case, I don't have anything to count, but I can count the glass. Also, I can count the bottle of water, but not the water itself. So uh, we are going to see the vocabulary. And also we are going to have some words that we can use in both. So let's see, we are going to begin with a list of most common uncountable nouns. So in this case, I will uh, write the English word and I will uh, write the, the translation of that word. So we are going to have English and Spanish because it is uh, kind of better to have that kind of vocabulary because we can um, learn better the information. So we are going to have the English part and the Spanish part. So let me see, uh, I will take this. Mm, but in this case, I don't know if I can take this one. So let me, I will change this, um, this searcher because in this case, I cannot have the, um, the table that I like. So I will change for the other one that is very to create this kind of uh, tables. So give me a second. I have here the document. Because I don't like that one. So here we are. Yeah. Like this. Okay, we're in the other one. In this, I can create that kind of tables. In the other one, I don't know why I can do it. So we are going to insert the table like this. So I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I have a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of. We are going to have like this. So in this case, we have the noun. And we have here the Spanish. And Spanish. So we are going to begin with this side. So we have in the first one, we have the word advice. Advice. In this case, it's not uh, our uncountable nouns. 
So we cannot count these words. So in Spanish, it is consejo. We cannot count uh, an advice. We can hear that advice. We have a lot of advices, but in this case, we cannot count. Then we have accounting. I don't know if I can do it. Yes. So in Spanish, this word means contabilidad. Then we have advertising. That in Spanish, it's publicidad. So I don't know if I can do it kind of smaller because I like to have all the whole world in this space. Like this, okay. So then we have air. We have air that is aire. Then we have alcohol. That in Spanish is alcohol. Then we have art. Arte. Biology. Biología. Blood, sangre, coffee, and we are not talking about the, the seeds, we are talking about the, the drink or the preparation of this uh, drink, cafe. Then we have cotton. Algodón. Then we have dust, polvo. Now we have education, educación. Electricity, electricidad. Experience, experiencia, fiction, fiction, flour, harina, Then we have gossip, chisme, grammar, gramática, grass, hierba, hair, cabello, happiness, Felicidad. Story. Historia. Then we have hope. Esperanza. Eyes. Yellow. Information. Información. In this case, we have law, ley. Another one, we have love, more. Look, suerte. Medicine, medicina in this case, uh, maybe we're talking about the category. We are not talking about the, the pills that we uh, take when we are sick. 
we are talking about the knowledge about these kind of topics. Then we have milk. Leche. Also, we have mist. Niebla. Two more music. Musica. And then we have noise. Ruido. So in this case, we have this, uh, these words. There are a lot of uh, words that we can use in this category. So in the link, you will uh, find a lot of words. Maybe, I don't know if are, they are 115. Oh, I mean, there are 415. 450 palabras van a encontrar ustedes en el enlace. It is not like we are going to, um, like, I need to have all of those words in my mind. No, it's not the, not the case. It is like uh, you can have the information. It's good to have that kind of information because you can search. And in this case, in the link, you will have these words um, in order, uh, like the, it's a list from A to Z. Es una lista que está en orden de la A a la Z. So you will find a lot of words in order, depending on the letter. So you will find a lot of words in which you can use for your um, vocabulary. And it is necessary to have a lot of words. So. You will find 415 words in that link. So now we are going to create another table with the countable nouns. Ya tenemos eh, nombres no contables. Ahora vamos a crear otra tabla con nombres contables. But also there are a lot of words that you can use in this category. So let's see. In this case, I will make in this one a little shorter. Vamos a hacerlo un, pequeño, un, un poco más pequeña. Let's see, we have the same six here, but I will write just H. So we have noun, again, the Spanish. Noun again. And Spanish. So in this category, we are going to talk about countable nouns. Nouns that we can count. So in this case, we have plane, avion. Then we have friend, amigo. In this case, we are using friend because it is a person or even an animal, but you can count that a person, right? So then we have car. Also, we have seed. Semilla. Phone. Telefono. Then we have animal. We can count a lot of animals. Then we have king. That is a person, right? Ray. Then we have father, padre. In this case, we can say that it's a title, but it uh, pertains to a person. Then we have plant, una planta. Then we have candy, dulce. And in this case, we are talking about not the taste. We are talking about the, um, the object, in this case, the candy, not the taste, something sweet. We are going to talk about the uh, food. Then we have dog. Perro. Egg. Huevo. Paro. 
Botella. Then we have actor. Or. Then we have. Towel. Toya. Boat. Bote. Window. Una ventana. Hat. Sombrero. Mm, book. Libro. Page. Página. And the last one, we have apple, manzana. I know these are just some words that we can use in the uh, countable nouns. And we have a lot of words again in this list. So for this list, maybe we are going to find Mm, I think less words than in the uncountable now, but you will find a lot of words. But there are like some words that we can use in both situations. And we're going to see some words that we can use in both. So, um, It says that we can use this kind of uh, words with both uh, situations. And you know that uh, our, uh, the countable nouns are uh, individual objects, people, places, which can be count. And uncountable nouns are materials, concept, information, which uh, are not individual objects and cannot be count. But some nouns can be used as both countable and uncountable nouns usually with a difference in meaning. Tenemos palabras que las podemos utilizar en ambas eh, situaciones, pero que dependiendo de la situación en que lo ocupemos, el significado va a ser diferente. Let's see. So as you know, uh, in English, there are uh, many words that we can use in different uh, contexts. So in that case, we are going to use the same word for different uh, things in our life. And they are the same word, but in the context that we are using it, it changed their meaning. So we are going to see the first example, and it's the word glass. We can know this as vidrio, verdad? O un vaso. It depends on the meaning or interpretation that we are going to give to this word. So we have the first example and it says glass. In this case, it's a material. And we have the example. And it says, Glass can be recycled. From all bottles. So in this case, it's, uh, we are talking about the material, something that we can count. Eh, está hablando de un material que podemos contar. Eh, dice que el vidrio, en este caso sería vidrio, puede ser reciclado de botellas viejas. 
In the second example, we have glass as a container. And we have champagne. was missing in the glass. In this case, it is just like to contain the liquid. In this case, the champagne. Then we have paper, the number two, paper. Paper. And we have the first thing and it says paper as a material. And we have the example, and it says, this book is made of paper. And then we have the other one that it says, paper, that we can uh, translate as a report or essay. And we have the example. He wrote a paper on grammar. And we have another example and it says paper as a newspaper. Then we have the example. I read about it in the paper. So in this case, we have two examples that are uh, something physical and one that is like um, something uncountable. In the number one, this book is made of paper. Está creado con papel y obviamente podemos contar, ¿verdad? El papel que se está utilizando para el libro porque está, sus páginas están hechas de eso, ¿no? De papel. Then, the second one is a report or essay. In some cases, we can eh, give that report or essay in paper. But in this case, it's just the idea of the job that this eh, guy did. Es un trabajo, ¿verdad? Es un, eh, un, lo podemos llamar una tarea que él entregó este reporte o ensayo. So in some cases it is not like we eh, give that information in a paper. We can do it by eh, a document in our computer. So in that case, we cannot count because we don't have that eh, physical things. And in the last one, is a newspaper, something that we can count. I read about it in the paper, in the newspaper. So we have this kind of words. So based on this information, we have that we can have words that can function as count and non-count depending on the context that we are using it. So also you are going to have this information on the links that I will send to you uh, at the end of this class, or maybe at the end of my other class at 10 p.m., but you will have the information. That's for sure. So let's see. Now we are going to talk about the other topic that we are going to develop because we are in the last minutes for this uh, session number four. So we are going to continue with more vocabulary because in this session we are going to create vocabulary. So let me search for the objective that is the expressions of quantity. We have the second topic that is this one, English expressions of quantity. Vamos a hablar de expresiones que podemos utilizar para referirnos a este tipo de cosas, ¿verdad? And we have the objective, continue, uh, continue or building English conversational skills by learning English expression of quantity. 
By the end of this class, you will be able to discuss transportation services using adverbs of quantity, including enough, many, fewer, and more. Practice incorporating expression of quantity in phrases such as, and we have some examples. Example number one, there aren't enough buses. Number two, we need more public transportation. Number three, there should be fewer cars. And number four, there isn't enough parking downtown. So it is supposed that we are going to learn uh, this kind of uh, sentences or this kind of expression. But first, we are going to uh, understand what are the expressions of quantity. What are they telling us and why we need to use them in our daily life and our conversations? So let's see. The expressions of quantity. Tell us how many or how much of something there is. So in this case, it's more complicated in English than in Spanish. Uh, to talk about a uh, quantity um, because we have these uh, two things that we are going to separate. There are the nouns. Uh, en inglés es un poco más difícil hablar de las cantidades eh, porque sabemos que tenemos dos tipos de nombres, los contables y los no contables. Y al tener dos tipos de nombres, necesitamos dos expresiones diferentes. Eh, no usamos las mismas expresiones para los nombres contables que las que utilizamos para los nombres no contables. En español es mucho más simple porque decimos hay, hay agua en la nevera, por ejemplo. Y podemos decir de nuevo, hay cinco manzanas en la nevera. And that's it. We have the same expression to uh, both uh, nouns. But in this case, we have uh, some expressions that are as the specific usage for those nouns. So if you can see in the explanation, it says how many and how much. Tenemos esas dos expresiones, how many and how much, para hablar de los nombres contables y los no contables. So, we have an example first. Then we are going to divide the how much and how many. But first, let's see this example. And we have number one, we get a little rain, a little rain in spring. And we have the number two, many people, many people live in London. So in this case, we have just a uh, many, right? But in this case, it's some expression. And it says, we get a little rain. Tuvimos un poco de lluvia en el, in spring, en lo que es la primavera. And then we have many people live in London. Muchas personas viven en Londres. So what is the meaning of a little in this case? We use a little with non-countable nouns like rain, snow, pollution, and we cannot use a little with countable nouns. In this case, we are going to use little just with non-countable nouns. En la expresión a little, un poco, solo la vamos a utilizar con nombres no contables. En este caso, no podemos utilizarla con nombres contables. Then it says that we use many with countable nouns like people, cars, and shares. Many, sí lo vamos a utilizar con nombres contables. And we have a list of expressions that we are going to uh, read that uh, can help us to understand these kind of uh, structures to talk about the countable and non-countable nouns and expression that we can uh, say. So, let's see. Yes, we have some time. 
Vamos a eh, hablar de algunas expresiones y las vamos a dividir. ¿Qué expresiones vamos a utilizar para los nombres contables y qué expresiones vamos a utilizar para los nombres no contables? Y también, ¿qué expresiones vamos a utilizar con los dos? Tenemos tres categorías. Expresiones para nombres contables, expresiones para nombres no contables y expresiones para ambos. Así que vamos a, otra vez, crear nuestra tabla porque es mucho más fácil de entender. So, we have the first one. And we are going to talk about countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Vamos a hacer primero la de los nombres contables y no contables. H. Okay, here we have the first one, countable nouns. And in the second one, uncountable nouns. So the expression that we have for countable nouns are many, and we are going to add an example, ideas. Then in the second one, several or a few. And also ideas. In this case, we are uh, counting the ideas. So then we have a couple. Then a great. Or large number. A great, again, but also we can add many. Then a few that we have uh, in the second one, few and then not many. And for the uncountable nouns, we have much. And we have the example information. A little, quite a bit, a great amount, a great deal, In this case, just a little. Tenemos dos expresiones, a little y little. And then not much. So, then we have the expression that we are going to use in both situations. The countable and uncountable expression of quantity. I'm going to add just 10 of the 17 because we don't have uh, much time to end the session. So we are going to add just 10 in this moment and then we are going to, um, I'm going to add the other seven that you are going to have the complete list in the uh, link of this uh, document. Remember that I will send to you this document maybe today or maybe tomorrow morning. So. Countable and non-countable. Expressions of quantity. So we have the first one and it says not any. This is for both. And we have an example, countable. And we have, there are no any biscuits left.
and with the non-countable We have the example, there is no any water in the sink. Then we have the second one and it says no. Just the word no. And with the countable, we have there are no animals in the park. In the park. And with the uncountable or non-countable, it says, there is no money in my purse. Then we have some. And it said, some children play here on the weekend. And for the non-countable, we have, there is some smoke coming from that house. So in that case, um, we have these examples. So I have 17 um, examples of these words. So, I mean, we have a lot of expressions and then I will write all the examples because I need to, um, that you understand the uses of this expression. So at the end, I will write all the, um, the sentences and then you will find this in the document. So remember, I will send to you this document in which you are going to find all the information for this week. And also you are going to search the same um, document for the other three weeks. Vamos a tener este documento para todo el curso, así que yo les voy a mandar el enlace para que ustedes estén revisando los temas. También les voy a mandar otros enlaces con información extra de este tema que estamos viendo de los countable and non-countable nouns para que los vayan revisando y tengan mucha más información que les puede servir para el futuro. So, now we are going to end the session number four. Vamos a terminar la sesión número cuatro. And then we are going to see each other on Monday. Tomorrow we don't have any session. Así que vamos a ver hasta el lunes. Mañana no tenemos eh, sesión. Eh, si no han comenzado a trabajar en la plataforma, eh, pueden hacerlo. Tienen que completar sección número uno y número dos, por lo menos esta semana. Pero si ustedes se adelantan, no hay ningún problema. Ustedes pueden hacer eso. So, now it's time to say goodbye. Have a really good night and see you on Monday. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. See you on Monday. See you.